Honourable Senators, I rise today to speak on the government's motion to invoke time allocation on the Senate's debate of the message from the House of Commons on Bill C-11. As you have heard throughout this debate, the Senate's amendments on Bill C-11 were the product of an intensive committee study process. The Senate's Transport and Communications Committee heard nearly 70 hours of testimony from 140 witnesses, with 67 additional written submissions on this topic. The committee studied this issue tirelessly. Since we received the message, the product of that committee study, back from the House of Commons, we've debated for just only six hours before Senator Gold gave notice of the government's intent to invoke time allocation. The Senate government leaders, first Senator Harder, now Senator Gold, have boasted for years about this government's disdain for invoking time allocation and the lack of necessity for them to ever employ it. So why is the government choosing to invoke time allocation now? After almost eight years of governing, it is appalling that the Trudeau government is choosing to impose time allocation in the Senate for the first time on Bill C-11, of all bills. With this move, the Trudeau government is censoring debate on a censorship bill. The irony is not lost on Canadians, Honourable Senators. Canadians have lost a lot of trust in this Trudeau government as this legislation has worked its way through Parliament. The backlash from Canadians has been fast and furious as citizens, and especially young people, resent the government's attempt to interfere with the content Canadians can access and produce online. Honourable Senators, I know your email inbox and telephone voicemail is just like mine, overflowing with emails and phone calls from Canadians opposed to Bill C-11. It is sometimes overwhelming, but it is indicative of the fact that many Canadians understand that their freedom of access to information and freedom of expression is at risk with this legislation. People, especially young people, routinely stop me to register their opposition on this bill, not only conservative-leaning people, but also lots of people who have previously voted for the Trudeau government, as well as those who haven't ever been engaged in politics before. Canada's domestic online content producers, musicians, artists and influencers are largely united against this bill because of the negative implications this bill has in limiting their reach online and, in turn, curtailing their livelihoods. Time allocation is one of the most political parliamentary procedures. Many senators in this chamber assert themselves as independent and devoid of partisan affiliation, but they will ultimately turn and vote for the use of the legislative guillotine on Bill C-11 simply to support this Trudeau government. Honourable Senators, don't be fooled. Time allocation is just the government's very blunt tool to cut short debate and force their agenda through Parliament. In this place, one of our roles as Senators is to safeguard and preserve the rights and interests of minorities that may be overrun in a House of Commons elected by representation by population. How is invoking time allocation in accordance with that aspiration, Honourable Senators? I submit that it runs roughshod over the very minority interests Senators are sworn to protect. So why is the Trudeau government pushing so hard to see that Bill C-11 passes both Houses of Parliament as soon as possible? The timing is perhaps curious, but not difficult to understand. Canada is in the midst of a national affordability crisis where Canadians are finding it difficult to secure the very necessities of life, like a roof over their heads and food on their tables. Meanwhile, the Trudeau government has increased the cost of the bureaucracy by 50%, yet finds it in itself embroiled in the biggest public service strike in Canada's history something that could only be accomplished by the most incompetent money managers in the Trudeau government. Once Bill C-11 is passed, I suspect the Trudeau government will move to prorogue Parliament soon in an attempt to lower the heat and distract from its many scandals. And they're really dodging quite a few scandals, Honourable Senators. First and foremost, of course, is the alleged Beijing election interference scandal that continues to dog Prime Minister Trudeau, following him like a bad stench. Tied into that is the mess that his family's Trudeau Foundation has devolved into. We're told one day that the Prime Minister hasn't been involved with the Trudeau Foundation for 10 years, even though his brother signed the agreement for a questionable donation that points right back to the Chinese Communist government. In fact, you might even be tempted to give the Prime Minister the benefit of the doubt, until you open the newspaper and discover his office hosted a meeting of the Trudeau Foundation and senior government officials right within the confines of his Prime Minister's office. 
Every day seems to bring more bad news for this Prime Minister, and we know that answering for his behaviour is not high on the Prime Minister's list of priorities. Prorogation has the advantage of keeping the Prime Minister well away from pesky and intrusive opposition and media questions on Parliament Hill. Instead, he can hide away out of view, waiting until his special rapporteur reveals magically just before the May long weekend. That surprise, there's no need for a public inquiry into Beijing election interference, leaving the Prime Minister free to go to as many $9,000 a night luxury beach villas as he wants. Surfs up. Meanwhile, with Bill C-11 rammed through Parliament, the long arm of the Trudeau government will have the ability to manipulate and influence the information Canadians see and produce online, just in time for another election. How fortuitous. Honourable Senators, you don't have to provide Prime Minister Trudeau with political cover by passing this legislation. Our Senate produced 26 very solid and reasonable amendments to Bill C-11 after weeks of careful study, research and witness testimony. And what did the Liberal NDP majority in the House of Commons do with them? Sure, they accepted 20 out of the 26 amendments, which sounds like a win, until you look closer and discover that they rejected some of the most substantive amendments. This included, of course, the most important amendment on exempting user-generated content, proposed by two Trudeau-appointed senators, Senator Meville Deschain and Senator Simons, from the Senate's largest independent senators group. The Trudeau government passed the amended bill back to the Senate, and now it is once again our choice to make. The government still refuses to protect user-generated content in the actual legislation, instead of insisting that appending such a promise in the wording of the motion will suffice. The motion reads, quote, that the Senate take note of the Government of Canada's public assurance that Bill C-11 will not apply to user-generated digital content and its commitment to issue policy direction to the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission accordingly." Unquote. Honourable Senators, I wasn't born yesterday. I've seen Prime Minister Trudeau's Liberal promises come and go. Remember electoral reform? Two billion trees? Clean drinking water on all reserves? A carbon tax ca capped at $50 per tonne? Funny how those promises just vaporized into the ether. This one will too. The Trudeau government wants senators, and by extension Canadians, to just trust us. Just trust us. Kind of like how the government Senate leader consulted with our leader before declaring a failed agreement and moving time allocation. That kind of trust? There's no reason to think this Liberal promise will hold up any better than any of the many, many other broken Liberal promises. The Liberals forced this message through the House of Commons side, and now they are forcing it through the Senate with this imposition of time allocation. Honourable Senators, here is your chance to prove your independence. We have the opportunity and the obligation to push back for the benefit of all Canadians who value freedom of thought and, and freedom of expression. If those of you who were appointed by Prime Minister Trudeau vote with the government to shut down debate, consider that the last vestige of the independent Trudeau Senate. You hold the majority here, so you decide. Here's hoping you choose wisely. Thank you.